so good morning all of you present over here i am monica shah working as a assistant professor in civil engineering department navrashya university welcomes you all on the technical session of the green construction today we have ms keshvi shah with us she is our alumni of the batch 2013 17 uh, she has completed her graduations in 2017 she has carried out uh, internship during that particular time in the hunarshala foundations in the bhuj she had also worked under so many projects with our faculties just like smart structures smart stretch uh, smart materials computational fluid dynamics dynamic analysis of structures using finite element methods and many more she has also completed her masters from the national institute of construction management and research pune during her that period she had carried out the internship on volta green structures at hyderabad presently she is working as a bio one supply chain management at worli india in bombay she is working on the government oil and gas projects and her team are managing and the purchase and expenditure of the products and other sub products she is also dealing with the clients she is working with the contracts and she is experting and she is also awarding the contracts based on the uh, tenders so we are very happy to have you today with us keshwi i hope our students will get the benefit out of that uh keshwi uh, over to you you can start your presentation now all right am i visible yes okay so thanks a lot ma'am i want to thank navrashna for giving me this opportunity especially monica ma'am uh, how many students am i seeing here you'll have around 32 34 students are here all right so ma'am has already given my introduction still i'll just give you a brief I'll share my screen is it already there it's visible yes yes it is all right, visible all right all right all right so as you already said i'm an alumnus of batch 2013 2017 of navrashna itself then i've pursued post graduation in project engineering and management from nikmar pune i also am a certified associate in project management from pmi and currently i'm working as a supply chain manager at world india private limited in mumbai so uh, how the session is going to proceed i'm going to talk about these importance of carbon dioxide current terminology pavement energy harvesting traditional construction technology steel construction european unions emissions trading schemes so i'll talk on all all these topics for about half an hour to 45 minutes and then we'll have our question answer session all right so the students are at their homes or in the classroom in the classrooms okay all right so why do we need to discuss the significance of uh, co2 because it is the talk of the world today we discuss a lot about carbon footprint we discuss a lot about uh, removal of uh, greenhouse gases and about decreasing the carbon footprint decreasing the emission of co2 in the atmosphere so we should know how significant it is to us as well so carbon dioxide along with other greenhouse gases makes a layer around the atmosphere and keeps it warm so here actually 
carbon dioxide along with greenhouse other greenhouse gases makes a blanket around the atmosphere and that is how it keeps it warm for us because uh, without the other greenhouse gases it would be very cold for us it would be very difficult to survive but we have exploited our natural resources over and mining and exploration aiming for industrial development and that has resulted in excessive emission of greenhouse gases uh the industrial revolution is also a classic example of it so this is why there comes the problem of global warming and this is why we talk about reduction of carbon footprint are uh, talking about the terminology used these days everywhere there are some terms you people should know so i'll discuss them uh, first is circular economy so a circular economy is a model of production and consumption which involves sharing leasing reusing repairing refurbishing and recycling existing materials and products as long as possible for example waste to wearables so we hear a lot about uh, recycling waste but we also know that all of the waste cannot be recycled you will always be left with some left over you'll always be left with some waste which cannot be recycled you must be hearing about plastic waste a lot there is all kinds of waste and uh, some metallic waste uh, actually just liquefies and turns into hazardous liquids and gases so hazardous chemicals are a, are all together a, a different subject which you must have already learned about or might learn in future so what do we do about this waste which cannot be recycled we can go back to the stage where the production started we can reduce it we can depolymerize it for example plastic can be depolymerized to the state of, of plastic pellets you must have heard about plastic pellets you you can depolymerize it, it to that stage and then that can be used in the making of construction materials or even in uh, making wearables uh, making clothes you must have heard about how uh, clothes are ma uh, made with the help of waste so it's not that straight forward uh, but you can actually process the waste which is captured and then you can utilize it for different purposes waste to wearables is actually a pretty, uh, pretty common in the world these days you must be hearing about it next thing is net zero so net zero refers to the balance between the amount of greenhouse gas produced and the amount removed from the atmosphere how do we remove greenhouse gas from the atmosphere or how do we remove carbon dioxide to keep it simple from the atmosphere one is naturally by planting more trees the other is they do have a mechanism in which they actually ex extract they extract the greenhouse gas they extract the carbon dioxide and transfer it elsewhere for example in oceans in oceans it's useful uh, it is also useful there in the production of food for aquatic life we reach net zero when the amount we add is no more than the amount taken away people are in talk a lot about net zero these days then see here uh what students am i seeing second and third year is it yes yes all right, all right. so they have started with their projects yeah not uh, in second year they don't have any projects but for third year yes third year they have started all right so uh at my time at your university i did my project on smart materials under dr bhairav thakkar and piezoelectric material is a kind of smart material and here i'm going to talk about an application of it Uh, so pavement in a harvesting is an application of piezo electricity what is piezo electricity certain materials possess a property of generating electricity when pressure is applied to them 
because of this property of theirs, they are known as piezoelectric materials. Simply put, consider a material. Take a material, for example, take a piezoelectric patch, for example. Apply some pressure to it and it will generate electricity. That is its property. It will generate electricity because of the pressure applied, because of the strain induced by the pressure applied. So because of this very property of its, it is known as a piezoelectric material. The converse effect also exists in which you, if you apply, apply electric field, uh, then strain will be induced. So they also show a converse effect in which they change their dimensions if electricity is applied to them. This is known as the converse piezoelectric effect. The lead zirconate titanate PZT is the best known such material, which in fact is commonly used to refer to piezoelectric materials in general. So here I want you to pay attention as I'll be needing answers from the students. Uh, so working off the piezoelectric patch, consider this cantilever beam loaded with UDL. I want you to tell me what will the fibers above the neutral axis of the beam and the lower uh, lower fibers, the fibers below the neutral axis of the cross section of the beam experience? Which fibers will experience tensile stresses and which fibers will experience compressive stresses? Please give me answers. Is everyone listening? Students, would you like to try this? You can even be wrong. Please give me answers. Uh, Keep the session hey, attractive. Yeah, the wrong answers are also welcome. Given a cantilever beam, what do the fibers above the neutral axis and the fibers below the neutral axis access experience what kind of stress students mainly third year second year students even you can uh, answer this question it's pretty simple yes master students are also here even they can uh, give the answers Piyush? Would you like to say something? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Bottom, I think uh, bottom is experiencing tension. All right. See, now uh, this is a cantilever beam. So it won't be like that for a cantilever beam. Why? Because it has just one fixed support. Just one end is fixed. So here it will be the opposite the upper fibers will be experiencing tensile stress. The bottom fibers will be experiencing compressive stress. So what do we do now? We want to control, uh, we want to reduce the deflection which is taking place here. So what do we do? We connect piezoelectric patches to the beam. Now, here, the PZT patch will show the converse piezoelectric effect. That is, if electric field is applied to the patch, it will show some strain. Now we are connecting uh, the beam with piezoelectric patches. So what are we doing? We want to reduce the longitudinal stress in the beam here. We want to reduce the tensile stress experienced by the upper fibers of the beam here. So we give electric field to the upper patch such that it will make the patch experience compressive stress. So the upper fibers of the beam here are experiencing tensile stress, so they have a tendency to expand, whereas the patch here is experiencing compressive stress. So it will have a ten tendency to contract. 
so what happens the resulting strain experienced by the fibers is lesser now the upper fibers of the beam will want to expand but they will not be able to expand because of the pzt patch which is connected here so, and same goes for the lower fibers we connect a piezo uh, piezoelectric patch here as well a pzt patch here as well and we just reverse the terminals of the cell so instead of experiencing contraction which it was experiencing here here it will experience expansion tensile stress so now the lower fibers of the beam will contract lesser so the resulting longitudinal strain will be lesser because of the resulting longitudinal strain being lesser the lateral deflection experienced by the beam will also be lesser hence this way we can reduce the lateral deflection which is there which is exhibited by the beam and this is how we can control vibration of a beam uh here i just showed you how the patch works so a straightforward example of it is in blue ray discs where you have to control vibration of the lever arm for getting accurate reading talking about its application in green construction there comes the concept of pavement energy harvesting now this was introduced by israel in 2010 what it is exactly is shown here so uh, consider a flexible pavement you people must be studying about this so consider a flexible pavement the upper surface is made up of asphalt yes consider a pzt patch embedded 5 cm below the surface of the asphalt here we are talking about the piezoelectric effect not the converse effect so what will happen is if any vehicle passes by the road here now there will be strain induced in the patch because of the deflection there will be some stress in the patch because of that stress it will generate electricity this energy which is obtained here can be stored and it can be used to power traffic lights and street lamps you can also route the energy into the grid later so now uh, pzt patches are basically crystals uh, they are either monocrystalline or polycrystalline and uh, polycrystalline show more deflection and all as compared to monocrystalline simple so why do we talk about this what is the problem with the renewable sources which we are already using the resources which we already use are wind tidal solar geothermal these are either location dependent or weather dependent and not easily available the name gives it wind tidal solar geothermal they are either location dependent or weather dependent yes piezoelectric energy is something we obtain through human activities and this is something we can have in abundance owing to the monstrous population density we all know about this problem of ours here the problem of our country here which uh, that it is heavily populated it is densely populated and this is a big weakness we have karlo please mute your mics all right so we can convert this weakness of ours which is our heavy population density into an energy harvesting strength you can at least promote the idea here we have to promote the usage of uh, such materials of coming up with some new energy technologies next is traditional construction technology so uh as monica ma'am already said i did my internship at hunar shala and uh, 
it is established actually after the 2001 earthquake which took place it is world famous for its uh, earthquake resistant technology and uh, sustainable technology so that is where i learned about all this so now imagine this you are in a room and it's all hot and dry outside still the room has an appropriate temperature inside without the use of any air conditioner you're in a room it's all hot and dry outside but the room has an appropriate temperature inside without the use of any air conditioner so how can that be achieved you can achieve it by using a traditional construction technology mitti ke ghar mud houses now mud is a bad conductor of heat that is why it gives you cool rooms in summer and warm rooms in winter i've actually experienced this i i did my internship there there, uh, there were no air conditioners there but the environment was pretty it was pretty breeze the, it, uh, it was pretty breezy you people must have heard about honarshala anyway it establishes a good temperature difference between the outer atmosphere and the inner atmosphere of the room how is that temperature difference achieved it is achieved by the larger thickness of the wall and the materials used now the materials used are cob rammed earth adobe clay so the advantages which these materials give are they are cooler cheaper and recyclable why do you think i need answers here please uh, why do you think that a traditional technology is not that much in use these days uh, what do you think are the disadvantages it has along with the advantages what uh, can i think? say yes yes please yes sir uh, lake lake of uh, uh, you know trained uh, artisans for that all right so i i would i would like to take the liberty of uh, saying this here that india has got the cheapest labor and uh, we have uh, many artisans here in fact uh, traditional construction technology is something which india can use the most because of the labor intensive industry which we have that is there other than that technically how would it be a problem anyone any other students would you like to answer this okay you go ahead keshvi all right so the disadvantages are vulnerability to water more care and maintenance and a musty smell how can vulnerability to water be avoided uh, you can use modern building science here so you can use 5% of cement for stabilizing the mud and it will be solved your problem will be solved other than that traditional materials like peat husk straw stone or lime can also be used uh talking about another walling method there's the wattle and daub method it's a beautiful mesh of interwoven sticks and twigs covered with clay then there's the debris wall which constitutes of soil water and waste now see this picture you see here is of the tizmi cafe in kotayam in kerala so uh, this is designed by the wall makers and uh, vinu daniel is the founder there he he is also an architect at auroville he has also worked at auroville any of you people have been to auroville anyone Peep, any any one of you know about auroville anyone knows no one i guess okay 
uh, all right so here this is cloth crete it's waste cloth finished with ferro cement and gray oxide resembling falling drapes so what uh, venu daniel says is a broken ceramic commode may be an ugly piece of waste but for him it is useful construction material in fact any kind of debris is great to work with a broken ceramic commode may be an ugly piece of waste but for him it is useful construction material in fact any kind of debris is great to work with what is sustainability for you people please answer what is sustainability for you give me small answers any answers to save the resources for future generation good nice all right so sustainability is the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level it is the avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance so you want to maintain the resources you have at a certain rate or level why in order to save them for the future generation you have to avoid the depletion of the resources which you already have in order to order to maintain a balance that is why they come up with the concept of reduce reuse recycle and this quote is a classic example of it reduce reuse recycle all right uh, talking about the roofing methods which can be used you can use mud rolls thatch and mangalore tiles for flooring you can use indian pattern stone and athangodi tiles shell structures made using such sustainable technology are a delight for the eyes examples are catlin dome and the timbrel vault so i've actually seen uh, uh, structures made out of uh, this technology and they are aesthetically pleasing they are beautiful uh if you still cannot accept the idea of using this uh, this technology for your homes at least use it in your farm houses so ma'am what's wrong uh i guess your voice was echoed no problem you can continue okay all right at least promote the idea thank you we move on to the next one so uh, as ma'am already said i did my internship at volta green structures in hyderabad where it was into the making of steel buildings so these are the two technologies they use there one is pre engineered buildings and one is light gate steel buildings or rbs that is rapid building structures so you people must be aware about the concept of pre engineered buildings already these are basically the pre fabricated warehouses and sheds we see in our industrial areas you must have seen them obviously what about light gate steel buildings these aren't very prominent here you people must have seen videos of modular construction you must have already heard about modular kitchen and everything but what about proper modular construction you know bana ke then they just put it there so it is not a cast and see to uh, technology so it is less labor intensive that that's a plus point your human resource is lesser here quantitatively so basically uh this is just where light steel sections are used which are fast and easy to erect at site applications range from commercial projects to mass housing projects so you see even residential projects you can even use it for your homes the advantages are better strength to weight ratio so you see it's pretty light in weight but it can take more load so for lesser weight it's giving you more strength hence it gives you better strength to weight ratios the dead load is pretty less better thermal resistance it has good sound damping properties better seismic resistance so it gives better earthquake resistance and it is cost effective too the cross section is made up of these fire resistant plasterboard as you can see here fire resistant 
plasterboard mineral wool insulation here then there's this light steel frame light steel sections so these sections can also be made using frame cad it's actually a software which is used for the making of cold form steel cold form steel sections it's it's widely used for this kind of technology then there's the sheathing board made of plywood or something breather membrane uh, so that is a vapor permeable membrane but a water resistant membrane it's used for giving good ventilation the rigid insulation board made of foam and polymer modified render which is basically a plaster so why is it not that prominent here what do we do when we go somewhere and we want to check the strength of the wall what do we do we give it a knock we give it a knock and we check if the sound is heavy enough if it is hard enough if it is hard then we think the uh, cross section is stronger so the solid the cross section the stronger the cross section is a big misconception which needs some serious brushing up you want to have strong walls use steel instead of bricks you can at least use it in your partition walls use this in your partition walls if you can still not accept uh this technology if you are still skeptical about it i'll give you 10 reasons for using lgsb technology in residential construction so uh, first of all it's fast efficient resourceful so why this because uh you have to do a lot of pre planning as it is not cast in c2 you have to do a lot of pre planning so that there is minimal waste once the construction begins this is what lean construction ab is about you must have heard of it it's a concept uh, where minimal waste has to be generated once the construction phase begins so a lot of pre planning is done hence it is fast efficient resourceful adaptability and accessibility it is adaptable to the changes you want to make uh so it is agile that way and it is accessible for electrical wiring good earthquake resistance added fire resistance less columns more open space less material more usable space aesthetics meet function aesthetics why because steel as a material can be molded into various shapes you must have seen uh, many buildings which are aesthetically pleasing uh, abroad made up made up of steel so aesthetic speed function function here i'm talking about all the functions including good sound uh, sound damping properties and uh, even operational ease strength beauty design freedom why because uh, steel gives you the property of being durable and it, it also gives you the advantage of precision hence strength beauty design freedom it is endlessly recyclable and it is lighter and less harmful to the environment i hope you get an idea here and uh, you make use of it at least promote the idea so that people make use of it so that uh, more of it is used in india thank you next up is this now this is something i am promoting these days i i work uh, in the oil and gas division at bolly india private limited bolly is the world's number one in the hydrocarbon sector and right now i'm uh, working on a government project on indian oils project so now this is something which was proposed by the european union so it is known as the european union's emissions trading scheme 2013 2020 in 2021 it launched phase 4 and it had achieved good results uh, way ahead of the the expected time period all right so what is the scheme about 
the overall volume of greenhouse gases that can be emitted by power plants industry factories and aviation sector covered by the eu emissions trading system is limited by a cap on the number of emission allowances so there's a limit set for the number of emission allowances within the cap companies receive or buy emission allowances which they can trade as needed so every company buys some allowance it has some allowance for the emissions for the uh, number of greenhouse gases amount of greenhouse gases it can emit now uh, after it buys the emission if there is some company which has more number of allowances than it requires it can even sell it off to one which has lesser and that way it can get money so again it's just doing business everyone wants to do business everyone wants to make money at the end of the day they will all ensure that the emissions are reduced because you have to buy allowances for the emissions the cap decreases every year ensuring that total emissions fall it's just an idea i wanted to put here now i want to know if anyone of you has uh, any uh, green technology ideas i would like to discuss with you guys i would like to know your input actually final year students are not here and they are working with such kind of projects the students are not have been started such kind of projects in which they can start learning about the different techniques and all all right and even if you have heard about anything on social media you can share yeah if not now then maybe later <laughs> yeah sure sure definitely yes you, you people can connect with me anytime Uh, so uh, would you like to ask anything regarding the presentation also if you want to ask anything you can ask to the keshu you can ask your questions uh, if any questions you have you can give your inputs or if you want uh, to put up some idea here or you have heard about something please speak up actually one thing i would like to ask you keshvi about that yes. uh, piezo electric effects that you have talked about so uh, have you ever tried this kind of uh, piezo electric effects and how you are able to get the energy and if you are able to store it or something like that have you ever tried such kind of things i have not been able to try it as i have just started working i am just trying to promote the idea but i plan okay. to do it later if possible but i did uh, do this project under bhairav sir as you also no yeah. where i yeah i came up with statistical data so that's okay. there but yeah practically i will be doing it later if possible sure sure if you are able to do it please share on the social media our students were there active so we'll be able to get an idea about it yeah students would you like to ask anything about this i guess nobody has any doubts so i'll request uh, nirav sir to share a word of thanks yeah uh, thank you ma'am uh, firstly i would uh, say thank you keshvi sir Uh, it was actually a thought provoking and educational seminar and it was an honor for us ultimately me to uh, have an opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of uh, civil engineering department at navrasana university i nirav patel assistant professor would like to express my gratitude to both the speakers uh, and monica ma'am obviously uh, for arranging such a wonderful sessions uh, firstly i would say that despite Uh, a very busy schedule keshvi you have made us uh, deliver the talk and accepted our invitation to give the speech it was uh, actually a thought provoking and uh, it would be helpful to all the students as well and mainly i would appreciate the vivid examples you have given on the mud technology and piezoelectric effects 
so that way we had various examples uh, which were there so that was also very much helpful i like to express my gratitude to everybody who has attended uh, the seminar and made it a successful one thank you everyone and have a nice day thank you so much thank nirav you. sir yeah, and thank, thank you so you. much keshvi once again and the students if you want to interact with her in future also you can contact me i'll share her details to you okay have a nice day guys thank, thank you bye yeah bye bye have a good day bye thank you